we have two GitHub repos. One is github.com slash Intuit, where our, all our SDKs are. And we have another GitHub repo into developer, where all our sample apps are. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand it over to Wamsi and Ryan, who are going to actually dive into the code of a sample app and tell you how exactly each of these work. So uh, Ryan and Wamsi, please take it away. I've gone to uh, this uh, GitHub repository and I've cloned uh, the Java sample application and a few prerequisites uh, for this are uh, I come to uh, I've logged in as a developer and I've got myself an O2 application and I've I have a client ID and secret which I've then taken it and I've put it in this application dot properties file and wherein these are my application credentials that I've configured. So in the readme here, you'll see that uh, this is what I'm doing to uh, compile the app uh, locally. Um, and then it's running on localhost at that time. Uh, I can go in the browser over here. to see that comes up. Um, one of the first things it talks about in these apps is to make sure that um, your application properties file, uh, for all the sample apps, they have various um, ways to do doing these configs. Um, but the idea is that you need to populate it with whatever client ID, client secret um, you have over on uh, um, from the dev portal. Uh, so you see here's my Auth2 app um, that uh, Vishal already went through. And then I have uh, this client ID, client secret. So going over to the app side in the application properties here, you see that I've populated my client ID, client secret, and then also the redirect URI. Um, the redirect URI, I, by default, it'll come with one. Obviously, it doesn't uh, do much. But um, we want to go ahead and add one that we're going to use for local development in this case. And notice that we're using our development keys, which means we're using our sandbox companies as well. Um, so I took this and then populated it over here in the auth to redirect URI. At this point, the app is uh, functional. Um, so if I go back to the browser, you'll see uh, by clicking on Connect to QuickBooks, um, this will go ahead and do the same flow that uh, Shal demonstrated earlier from the, the playground. Completing this um, authorized but come back. And then behind the scenes now, um, you have a bear token that you can go ahead and make all these calls with the same way that we demonstrated earlier. So I can refresh that, and then I can ultimately go ahead and revoke that and go home. Um, so just taking that use case, uh, we can dive into code and look at what's going on behind the scenes. These are all handlers for um, the Connect to QuickBooks button, uh, Sign with Intuit button, all the ones that you saw behind the scenes. Um, so this will go ahead. This is using the SDK to construct this, but um, it's going to go ahead, uh, call all to config prepare URL. This is going to construct that URL that you see that actually loads uh, the, um, the subscription screen with the authorized dialog. So just to go back for a second, if you come in here, you'll see this whole URL generated. This will be, de uh, this will be generated by the app um, and by the developer. Um, so basically, just to break down what we have here, Connect Auth 2 is our authoriz authorization endpoint. This is a little kickstart, um, the whole authorization flow. It'll load um, the screens to ultimately redirect back to your app. Uh, it's constructed using client ID, uh, response type, which is a required parameter, and then the scopes that you want. Um, you can see that's passing in accounting. And then ultimately, here's the, the local host redirect URI. So this is what we're going to redirect back to um, on the app side. And then ultimately, um, yeah, that'll redirect back. OK. Um, so 
On this side, um, in the callback controller, you'll see this is handling um, the redirects that we're getting um, from Intuit side. So basically, when clicking on the authorize, authorization button, um, you saw that redirect happen back and it says, you know, now you're connected. Behind the scenes, what's going on is it's redirecting to the OAuth2 redirect, which is what we um, plotted in our app. So right here, so OAuth2 redirect. Um, so once you redirect back to here, you'll see that there's the incoming code parameter um, that we re redirect back to along with a few other parameters, but um, this is the parameter of interest. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take this code parameter and then we're gonna call uh, the bear token API. So again, you can see we're using the SDK, uh, client.retrieve bear tokens. We're sending in the auth code that was received along with uh, the same redirect URI that we're using here. Um, ultimately, the response here is going to create that bear token that Vishal demonstrated earlier on the, the playground. Um, that's your source of truth. That's kind of your key to actually call these APIs. Uh, we, we have a note here that once you receive that access token refresh token back um, from that that um, that call, you'll actually want to go ahead and store it in your data store uh, in your database and persist it. Um, it for the sake of this sample app, uh, we're not doing that. We're just storing it in uh, in the session. Um, but that's something of importance. Obviously, if you don't store it anywhere, then you'll lose it right after that that one time connection. Um, and ultimately, you'll also see here, if you passed in OpenID scopes, uh, we actually check if the ID token was returned. Um, this was de demonstrated earlier uh, in the session by Vishal as well in the playground. If OpenID scopes are passed in, then an ID token is returned in the response. Uh, you'll want to go ahead and validate that. Uh, again, this is being done behind the scenes right now, but um, we have documentation on the site as well on uh, validating the ID token. Uh, this is just, you know, another uh, security mechanism. So now that you have the, the bear token, um, if you, let me try and piece this back together um, to show you kind of the, the UI, what's going on. So after this redirects over here, you'll see these buttons. So like QuickBooks API call. In the code side of things, uh, you'll see like get company info. So, that, so that's what it's calling. Basically, this is at this point, it's constructing a call to, um, to retrieve the QBO data uh, using OAuth2 as the authorization header. Uh, so essentially there's, there's two components to making an API request like this to QBO. One, you need the Realm ID. Um, this is actually constructed in the URL for these, uh, these API calls. Uh, and then you also pass in the bear token that you received um, in the header. Uh, so down here, you'll see this. Over here, uh, you'll see essentially the same um, setup of what we're doing in, in the catch scenario. So if I go back to the, the app, you'll see that um, we have these buttons to continue to refresh the access token same way that it's done on the playground. Uh, and same idea here, uh, all it's doing is actually leveraging the same SDK call uh, to refresh the bear token. Um, nothing uh, too specific to show there. Um, over on the revoke token side, um, basically this is just demonstrating that uh, um, a call to our um, revoke API. Uh, I don't have the spec in front of me for that, um, but this takes in a refresh token or an access token uh, along with your client credentials that it's getting right here, um, and then we'll actually revoke that token. So I can go ahead and show that. So after revoking it, now trying to make a, key, a QuickBooks call, you'll see that uh, response failed. Uh, here's a, a pretty important nuance that um, I want to point out. So at this point, it's fairly straightforward that you're just making a call to QBO and you're trying to get the company info um, using that bear token. Now, 
if that call fails in the sense that it returns a 401, uh, that means that essentially your access token, which was valid for an hour, has now um, expired. So you'll want to create some mechanism, which you'll see here, where you make a call using this bear token and you'll catch the response and say, oh, it was a 401? Well, now it's time to refresh that access token. Uh, and we have a comment here that calls that out. So it's kind of like a, you know, if it fails, try again. Uh, and then, you know, on the second response after calling the refresh API or uh, re refreshing your, your access token, uh, you would get a 200 with the company information. So, right, uh, um, if we look over here, right, um, we catch the invalid token exception and then uh, basically we build the, the refresh token and then after the try, uh, we do client.refresh token, right? And when we do the refresh token, we get a new access token, and then the mm, mm, yeah, you're you're correct. Um, yeah, some some of this code is uh, due to myself as well. Uh, so yeah, good call out. Uh, it's doing exactly what uh, <laughs> Michelle just pointed out. Then, so, so basically, uh, one call out here, right? Um, in fact, two. So um, as far as the integration model is concerned, um, with any standard uh, authorization mechanism, uh, the access token is valid for one hour. So this is our recommendation that you uh, don't ref uh, get a new access token for every API call. Instead, you know, wait for it to expire and do a defensive programming like this, right? So that you get a new access token once the previous one expires. The second call out is when we issue you a a new access token. We also send back a refresh token back in the same response. And our recommendation is that you should persist that re uh, refresh token every time. Uh, and the reason being that for security and compliance reasons, we can rotate or change the value of the refresh token anytime. So, uh, you know, if you store, if the application code stores the refresh token every time it gets it, it would make it foolproof that you know next time when we rotate the value, you your application will not be impacted. So uh, um, two cases, right? You'll get a 401 if your access token is not valid. Uh, other case you can get 401 is if your refresh token itself uh, is, expired. Uh, is expired. So, uh, but you know, two separate calls of 401 that you're talking about. Uh, when we are talking about an explicit, uh, you know, V3 API call as we make today, and we get a 401, it should be access token expiry. The refresh token expiry 401 will happen when you uh, make a call to get a new access token. That is the time when you would get a 401 for a refresh token. 